Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with Our Blooming Catholic Life. And I don't know about where you are, but today it's hotter than, well, let's just combat that with a good book from our friends, 10 books. Yes, we're still pulling books out of this box. Pretty exciting. Let's get on to it. Begin as we always begin with a prayer, the prayer before the crucifix. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Summe gloriosa Deus, illumina tenebras cordis mehi, et domihi, fidem rectum, spem certum, et caritatem perfectum, sensum et cognitionem domine, ut facium tuum sanctum et verax mandatum. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Okay, friends, let's dive in here. I can see right here this book right here on top. The next one is Crown of the Virgin, an ancient meditation on Mary's beauty, virtue, and sanctity. This is by Saint Ildefonsus of Toledo, translated by Father Robert Nixon. What a great choice for this month. August is dedicated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You know I love the Franciscan crown, which is a rosary, a seven-decade rosary, dedicated to Our Lady. So let's see what's in the crown of the Virgin, if it's all the same. I'm going to start out saying this book is lovely. It's hardcover. This is like, the gold is like embossed. You can feel it. So it's got a soft, velvety texture to the hardcover book, but you can really feel all this detail in gold. A lovely picture um, it says on the side let's see what's on the back quick an imaginative and lyrical set of meditations on the splendor beauty and sanctity of the Immaculate Mother of God first time in English I'm struck again because I did just say about the Immaculate Heart of Mary and I forgot we're almost at the feast day of st. Maximilian Colby who spent so much time thinking about and meditating on the Immaculata so let's see, in this book he provides a powerful, imaginative, and lyrical set of meditations on the Immaculate Mother of God, reflecting on her splendor, beauty, and sanctity. That's a little odd. It pretty much repeats what's in gold, repeat here in white. A little awkward there. The publication is the first translation into English of a Latin work, which is also like the thing right here. Really repeats right away. Just in case you weren't reading it, it puts it up here in bold, but I don't know that they then needed to repeat it. So the Latin work was entitled Labellus de Corona Virginis, or the little book on the crown of the Virgin. Traditionally, it has been ascribed to St. Eldafanus of Toledo, a great monk, abbot, and bishop of the 7th century. He contributed powerfully to the dissemination of the doctrine of perpetual virginity of Our Lady in Western Europe and to the popularization of fervent Marian devotion in Spain. In this beautiful, moving, and ornate literary portrait, the author imaginatively and lyrically fashions a magnificent crown for the Blessed Virgin Mary, decorated with 12 radiant jewels, six brilliant stars, and six fragrant flower blossoms. Each of these is interpreted as representing a particular aspect of the beauty, beneficence, virtue, or sanctity of the Blessed Virgin. A perfect companion for guiding daily devotion to the Mother of Mercy and the Queen of Heaven, each chapter reveals a new and scintillating glimpse into the glories of Mary, sure to inspire the heart of the reader with ever more ardent devotion to the Mother of God, the vessel of all graces, and the paradigm and perfection of every virtue. As a guide to meditation and a catalyst for prayer, the crown of the Virgin is an illuminating mirror of the beauty and splendor of the one who is herself the refulgent and immaculate image of her divine Son. And again, this is considered a religion spirituality book. It is by, published by Tan Books. This hardcover edition, it says it's $24.95 US dollars. Let's just pause for a second here because I don't know one of the words they said. Let me see if I can look that up. Do you know, friends, do you know what refulgent means? I don't. Here's my Merriam-Webster dictionary. Not always the best on some of these words, but let's give it a try. Refulgent. It is there. Refulgent. A radiant or resplendent quality or state. A lot of R words there. So refulgence is a radiant or resplendent quality or state. New word of the day. Just tell us where it came from again. Oh, another a synonym would be brilliance. Hmm. 
Okay. First known use was in 1634. It is Latin. It's from the Latin refulgentia, which makes sense since this was originally translated from Latin that they would use a word that comes from Latin to describe it. Nicely played. Oh, how lovely. Even the end paper. Even the end paper is lovely as we get in. The crown of the virgin. This is kind of setting a stage. Um, as we prepare for meditation, we know that while the Eastern religions, not Eastern Christian religions, not our Orthodox ones, but the Eastern religions like Hinduism and Buddhism, they tell you to empty your mind a lot of the times. And we don't empty our minds when we meditate. We fill our minds. So this is already filling my mind with beauty. It's saying to like set aside the ca cares of the world. We're going to think about some higher things. It reminds me of the stars on um, Mary's cloak in the Tilma, Our Lady of Guadalupe. That's what this immediately responded me, reminded me of. The, the stars and constellations of Mary. And we're getting into the crown of the Virgin. Ah, so he was originally, the translator is at the Abbey of the Most Holy Trinity in New Norsica in Western Australia. And it says the Tan Books is actually in Gastonia, North Carolina. That just sounds fancy, Gastonia. The, oh, the English translation. So this is new, friends. 2020 was the English translation copyright. How excited. Of course, all rights are reserved with the exception of short excerpts used in critical review, which is us. No part of the book may be reduced, transmitted, stored. So don't ask me for a free copy. This is not one um, that I'm going to be able to give you the English translation of. Sometimes, you know, I can find a PDF somewhere of certain books or meditations. This is not going to be one. You may find the original Latin somewhere, but I think you're going to want to see this book. The cover image is the Madonna of the Magnificat. Detail of the Virgin's face and crown, 1482, tempera on panel, by Botticelli Sandro. Uh, and then there's a lot, a lot more Italian-looking words. Um, it is available on I. Okay, it is available on Kindle and EPUB for my friends who like those formats. Yay! A lot of people are always asking me that. This book is available on Kindle and EPUB, and it was printed in the good old USA. Aha! And then, even though it's an English translation, they gave us a Latin dedication: Ad Majorum Glorium Virginis Mariae. It starts out with a poem by Oscar Wilde before the contents page. That's a little throwing me off, but let's go in. So Oscar Wilde was a poet in 1879. He said, Lily of love, pure and inviolate, tower of ivory, red rose of fire, thou hast come down our darkness to illumine, for we, close caught in the wide nets of fate, wearied with waiting for the world's desire, aimlessly wandered in the house of gloom, aimlessly sought some slumberous adone, waste for wasted lives, for lingering wretchedness, Till we beheld thy re-arisen shine and the white glory of thy loveliness. Not what I would have expected from him. Maybe I need to go back and look at Oscar Wilde again and see what's going on there. We're going to go ahead and move on. Maybe I'll find out more about that later. The contents are fairly easy to read. Um, the poem, it looks like it's in slightly smaller print and it's in a little bit fancy and it's italic so it's a little bit harder to read. Um, the contents is very clear. And, I mean, it's a standard Times New Roman, I would guess 12, so it's pretty easy to read. Um, except for the two at the top, does tell you there's a translator's note, a prologue, and then, is it just 16? No, there are 25 short chapters. Very lovely. And it says on why a crown is fitting for Our Lady, and it goes on the gem, so the precious topaz. Next is a star. Uh, yeah, the morning star Sirius. And then we have another gem, the carnelian gemstone, and then a flower, the radiant lily flower. I don't know what the, the precious chastledony is. Oh, we're going to have to get in here. I don't know what all of these things are, but they seem to be uh, gems and stars and flowers. Let's see how that works out. Translator's note. We'll just read a smidge of this, but I can tell you right off the bat here, look, footnotes, friends. And we know a lot of times I like footnotes. I don't know if they're going to be footnotes throughout the book, but in the translator's notes, it's super handy because that's going to refer us back, um, in this case, to scripture as well as some other books. And so it's nice to know right away where those things came from. Oh, there's lots of them. Great. Let's jump in and read a little bit of the translator's note. 
The text presented in the following pages is a translation from a Latin work entitled Labellus de Corona Virginis, or The Little Book on the Crown of the Virgin. Oh. Okay, we'll skip ahead to the part we haven't already read 30 times. The use of the image suggested by scripture of a bejeweled crown as the formal and conceptual basis of devotional writing to Our Lady is by no means unique to the present work. Innumerable other examples are to be found dating from the end of the Middle Ages through to the early modern era. Yet the present work, apart from considerations of its perhaps considerably greater antiquity, remains distinguished amongst this literary corpus of Marian crowns. According to its earliest editor, its glories and heartfelt piety and cordial affection and mellifluous sweetness to an extent that I have encountered no such other writings of the saints or doctors of the church, nor indeed have I found anything which seizes the soul of the reader more sweetly or inflames it to devotion to the virgin more ardently. Another compiler opines that we scarcely believe that this small book could be read without inspiring an intimate sense of piety and devotion towards the mother of God. The work is found in a single manuscript source only, from which the various published editions, of which mention will be made shortly, all derive, either directly or indirectly. The manuscript is held in the Venerable Library of the Cathedral of Toledo and is of unknown date, but is apparently most ancient. While no authors identify the manuscript, the text is located in a codex containing various rings of St. Ildefonsus, to whom it has therefore appeared reasonable to attribute the authorship. Ildefonsus, <laughs> around 607 to 670, was a monk at the monastery of Agali in the vicinity of the imperial center of Toledo, where he later served as an abbot. He became archbishop of that illustrious city in 659, succeeding his uncle Eugenius II. According to St. Julian, who succeeded him in his archiepiscopal office, Ildefonsius was rich with the fear of God, devout in religion, profuse in compunction, grave in carriage, praiseworthy in honesty, singular in patience, silent in guarding secrets, and of the highest wisdom. He was brilliant in his ingenuity of speech and fluent in his eloquence. A well-known tradition relates that the Virgin Mary herself appeared to him and presented him with a chasuble. I'm going to skip and let you read the rest of the translator's note. It does go on for a bit, which was surprising. Then there's a prologue by the author. So I am assuming that this means it's well, it's kind of funny. It's a prologue from an author, but we don't know who the author really is 100%. So that's interesting. And it starts out then with a quote from Ecclesiastes 45, 14. There shall be a crown of gold upon her head as a visible sign of her sanctity. Sacred scripture teaches us. All creation urges us. Mystical symbols warn us. And every page of holy theology instructs us that we should never cease to bless, to praise, and to proclaim the imperial majesty of the most glorious Virgin Mary. For she is decorated with the glory of every imaginable virtue, adorned with the finest pearls of all holy heavenly gifts, and rendered splendid by the radiance of divine wisdom and knowledge. We are warmly called to her praise by wonderful miracles, by oracles descending from heaven itself, through hidden mysteries, through the teachings of the prophets, through mystical signs, through the words of the Holy Gospel, and through the clarion call of the Lord's holy apostles. I'm not going to read to you all of it. He then kind of gives an outline of what the chapters are going to be. I, I do love that it has the flowers. There are many flowers, if you're into gardening, that have Marian meanings. And a lot of people, sorry, um, have those flowers in what they call Marian gardens. Um, and in olden American times, I don't know if other countries do this, they would take one of those old cast iron bathtubs that was perhaps no good anymore. Or I don't know, was it popular in the 70s when they were removing them? But they take the bathtub, they submerge half of the bathtub into the earth, and they use that as a cover and put a statue of the Virgin Mary in the middle and then surround her with various flowers. And perhaps some of the flowers are these. Indeed, it's, um, let me see, the ones I know are flowers are the lily, the crocus. Um, honestly, star of the sea can be a flower as well as a star. A rose, a violet, sunflowers, and a daisy. How lovely. We ended up with something very simple and humble. That could be a lovely symbology. Um, and it does start out on why a crown is fitting for Our Lady. I know that we talked about that a little bit. 
So let's get in. I mean, the chapters are fairly short. You could do this as a devotional one at a time. You could absolutely take these to adoration. Let's get into chapter two, which actually starts the book. Um, so we're going to see. I'm just going to flip them one, right? There's a second side of a page, a third side of a page, fourth. This is a prayer then. So it's a little meditation and a prayer. That's short, friends. You could totally take that to adoration. You could start out your adoration with, with that and meditate on it for the rest of the hour. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Shall we just grab one? Um, and look at the chapter. So the, the chapter number is fairly small, but the title is fairly big. Um, and it, although it has the chapter up here, remember what part it is in the crown is one number off because the first chapter was first numbered chapter was telling you what the crown was about so that's a little awkward it could have been done where the chapter numbers were the same that's how i probably would have done that that would have been easier like i'm on the third one i'll go to the third chapter doesn't work that way friends you're gonna have to remember to add one um and it just starts out right there addressing mary you O illustrious virgin happy gate of heaven pleasure of paradise empress of the angels queen of the world joy of the saints this right here is a lovely litany go ahead if you want to you could make this into a litany right there in the beginning of that um that's like five or six lines right there are basically a litany so add the lord have mercy christ have mercy at the beginning of the end and add pray for us in response and you you could easily write yourself some little litanies through these let's jump in here whoever out of some this is page 13 and whoever out of some troubled impulse finds themselves doubting their faith, they need only look to you and they will be solidly confirmed in the right belief. Whoever is tempted by some urge of the flesh may confidently invoke your grace and the peril to their chastity will be promptly taken away. Whoever is struck in their heart by foolish pride or elation need only to turn their glance to you and the proud swelling of their soul will be reduced by the merits of your humility. Whoever finds themselves set ablaze by the fire of wrath may raise their eyes to you and will become meek by virtue of your own perfect tranquility. Whoever is led by some error away from the path of true life may gaze at you as at the star of the sea, and they will be led back to the way of truth by means of your most gracious light. Um, I am guessing from this, friends, and there are some poems in here, what looks to be poems from the way they're inset and have stanzas. One thing that would be completely lovely to do while reading this, um, of course, is having a statue. We do have a, can I get her? I do have a small statue over here that you could have near you. But if you have a chance to go to adoration, that is probably going to be the best place to go. And we know most adoration um, will have our Lord repose either in a tabernacle or in a monstrance. Um, and we, we've all seen, I think by now, the lovely monstrance in Poland that looks like the Virgin Mary and the host is actually contained where her womb would be. And it does seem to kind of glow there. And that would be a lovely way to look at and, and meditate on the qualities of Mary while looking at our Lord emanating, as it were, from her. Remember, Our Lady is called as a type or um, the tabernacle is a prefigurement of her. So even looking at the tabernacle with the Lord reposed inside would be a lovely way to contemplate Mary, that she hid within her our Lord, that she led others to him, right? She, she bore him into the world and so that we could all have the humble and meek and self-giving Lord. And so even looking at a tabernacle where our Lord is reposed would be beautiful. And you can even imagine, friends, that that light there's always a candle next to the tabernacle if the Lord is reposed, right? The a lit candle. And you can imagine that to be the Holy Spirit right there as well. And of course, unifying them all would be God our Father. And that would be a lovely way um, to imagine this. Now, some places don't have a true tabernacle. They may have, if it's pure adoration chapel, sometimes they don't have a tabernacle per se. They have one where the monstrance goes back, so it's a little bit smaller and still can be closed when no one's in it. And then you open the doors and bring the monstrance out. So the monstrance may be sitting like right in front of that little, I don't know if it's still called a tabernacle, but also a lovely way to do it, to take. Um, I think I think after reading these, I would be meditate, but I would almost have to pray the rosary. And I know a lot of us are following right now. Dr. Taylor Marshall is teaching you for free. It's a course from his um, 
now I can't think of the words, New St. Thomas Institute, but he's offering it for free right now. It's how to pray the rosary in Latin, and so that could be lovely for you. These are so lovely. They're laid out well. They're laid out simple. They're small reflections. There are still footnotes throughout the meditations, but you can see they're small and unobtrusive, and they're pointing you to scripture. So the scripture verse isn't necessarily given in the writing, but it's going to be um, tell you where they got it from. Lovely. This book is wonderful. You're probably saying, how many pages? How big is it? It's 120 pages with all those notes in the beginning. It's fairly small. Here's my iPhone. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's fairly small. It's not quite pocket size, but it could easily fit in a purse or a backpack. This is a, a beautiful, lovely book. I may sample it out to one of our friends to take to adoration and see how fruitful they find it. I know I, I probably went on a little bit long this time, friends, but this is such a lovely book. Um, I really wanted to read some to you. I'm just going to read you just a tiny bit more. If I had this, sorry, this is from the aromatic crocus flower in the eighth place in the crown of the virgin if i had the tongues of all peoples and the melodic voices of all the angels at my command it would never suffice o most holy virgin to express worthily your praise for it should still remain insufficient in power and adequate inadequate in subtlety for the holy spirit gathers in you such miracles of virtue and such abundance of grace that the mind of neither humans nor angels is capable of expressing your honor in the world your glory in the heavens nor the opulence of the crown which you possess as your rightful reward as much as you deserve to be praised by all i a wretched sinner desire to place in the eighth position in your magnificent crown an aromatic crocus flower this flower is a gift most apt for you for the crocus is golden in hue delightful in its fragrance wondrous in its healing powers, and most truly the source of joy to all those who behold it. You likewise are golden, O Virgin Queen, with the precious gold of sanctity. For as the gold exceeds all metals in nobility and value, thus the dignity of your sanctity exceeds the merits of your saints and the prerogatives of all the angels. Therefore, you are rightly exalted above all beings in heaven and earth. And no, friends, if you are growing concern and you've watched this long, it says above, ex greatly exalted above all beings in heaven on earth. It is not above God by any means, but we give her glory as the mother of God. Let's read just a little bit of the prayer here, folks. So there's always a little bit of introduction. Let Mary abide always in my memory. Let the sweetness of Mary and her grace be the constant subject of my meditation. Let me be ever mindful of her untiring benefits and inexhaustible charity. O oh, lady, kindly accept these verses which I offer to you in honor of your glory. Hail, O river of mercy, crystal brook of peace, pellucid stream of grace, limpid dew of the valley, delicate bloom of modesty, mother of God and mother of mercy. Hail, O true salvation of the faithful, throne of the divine majesty, temple of Christ, house of the spirit, abode of the incarnate word, road leading unto life and lily of chastity. Hail, bloom of perfect beauty, bride of Christ, handmaid of the Most High, in perfection loveliness. I'm going to jump down, the poem continues. Holy Mother of Him who is both God and man, the glory and honor of the human race, transcending all saints in holiness, and surpassing in radiance all the celestial power, who could ever extol thee worthily? Who could offer you fitting praises? Because thou alone were worthy to bear God in your womb, and to suckle Him as a tender infant at thy breast, our salvation lies entirely in thy hands, O glorious lady. Therefore look upon us with mercy, that we may securely serve God, the eternal King, and thee, his blessed Mother, O Queen of Glory. Thou, indeed, live and reign with God upon the throne of super, supernal majesty through endless in eternities. Amen. And we get to comp contemplate that hopefully we get to enter some contemplation as we go through these meditations remember friends true christian contemplation is a gift from god we enter into meditation and then we go into some silence and hopefully the lord will send us a, a message or something he will commune with us give us that gift but let us not forget there is a step after that whether or not you enter contemplation you should come out then and come up with some sort of a plan. You've been given this gift of time with Our Lady and hopefully with Our Lord in adoration. Now what are you going to do? How are you going to live what just happened? How are you going to live that? And yes, absolutely, you should go out and adore Mary. But how are you going to, as she bore Christ in the world, how are you going to spiritually 
bear Christ out into the world. Now on this terrifically hot day, um, one way to do it is to make sure that our elders have access to water. Check on them, make sure their AC is working. Give them a phone call as well. Our little friends out in the environment, make sure you have some cold water, maybe a bird bath, or maybe you have a water dish or some sort of pond outside. Make sure that that is clean and with filled with cold, refreshing water for them. So think about the little ones out there as well. Um, if you know some children who are, are home alone, you know, of legal age to be home alone, but still you may want to just give them a call, make sure they're okay. Just kind of check on them a little bit make sure everyone's okay. And absolutely, if you know of a homeless encampment or something near you, absolutely make sure they're okay. Check on, of course, any pregnant mothers, making sure they hydrate. This weather can do crazy things to them as well. Make sure they are okay as they bear new life into the world. God bless you, friends. Of course, we're going to end with our prayer before the crucifix. So that we may always benefit right from these videos and our time together in nomine patri et filii et spiritus sancti amen sume glorioso deus illumina tenebras cordis mehi et damihi fidem rectum spem certum et caritatem perfectum sensum et cognitionum domine ut facium tuum sanctum et verax mandatum amen in nomine patris et filii et spiritus sancti. Amen. God bless you, friends.